Hi everyone and welcome back or welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to be moving on to a new topic, which is Newton's laws. So previously we have seen the part of physics that is the study of motion, like how objects move, including accelerations and changes in displacement or velocity. So physics is also the study of what can cause an object to accelerate. And that cause is a force, which loosely speaking is basically a push or a pull on the object. And this force is said to act on the object to change its velocity. For example, when a car accelerates or a train, a force from the track will act on the rear tires to cause its acceleration. And the SI units for this new value force that we have is the Newton. And the um, SI units are in kilograms and meters per second squared. So kilograms here you'll notice is mass and meters per second squared, if you remember, is acceleration. And we will be getting more into this relationship later on in the video. And it's important to remember that force is a vector quantity, which means that it would be labeled something like this with an arrow on top of it to indicate that this has both a magnitude and a direction. So that'll be important when we add up force vectors. And talking about adding up force vectors, that is known as the um, net force. And the net force or the resultant force is just what we get by adding two or more vectors, forces that act on a body. And a single force that has the same magnitude and direction as the calculated net force would then have the same effect as all the individual forces. And this fact is called the principle of superposition for forces. So moving on, we have the first law, Newton's first law. So Newton came up with several laws that we will be talking about in many of our videos, and this is just one of them. Today we're going to be talking about three. So the first law is that if no force acts on a body, then the body's velocity can't change, so therefore it can't accelerate. However, based on the previous definition we gave for a net force, there may be multiple forces acting on a body. For example, if I have, say, a ball over here, and I have one force acting this way, we'll label that F1, and one smaller force acting this way, F2, F net will be F1 plus F2, and since F1 is going to the left and it's greater than F2, we will have an F net slightly going to the left, and it will be the resultant vector of both of these. And we should probably add arrows to indicate that they are vectors. So now that we have understood the idea of net force, we can sort of refine our definition of Newton's first law to say that if no net force acts on a body, so F net equals zero, then the body's velocity can't change and thus it can't accelerate. However, we should also notice that Newton's first law is not true in all reference frames, but we can always find reference frames in which it is. Um, so these special reference frames are called inertial frames, and they are ones in which Newton's law hold true. For example, we often assume that the ground is our reference frame, and the ground is in fact an inertial frame um, if we disregard like Earth's rotations. And this assumption works well for most of our calculations. However, in certain scenarios, the ground can be a non-inertial frame. Um, this usually happens when we have like a car or something that's rapidly increasing in speed or a rotating frame. And that's a case in which we would have a non-inertial frame. But we will talk about that way into the future. So what we need to focus on is inertial reference frames. Before we can talk about Newton's second law, we have to go over something called mass. And from everyday experiences, we already know the idea of mass. For example, if we have a tennis ball, let's say you kick a tennis ball up into the air or hit it 
for more accurate descriptions, but if you hit a tennis ball into the air versus if you tried to hit a bowling ball into the air, that would probably break your racket and it would result in very different accelerations. We would expect the tennis ball to move a lot faster than the bowling ball because the object with the larger mass is generally accelerated less. And to be more precise, we can say that the acceleration is inversely related to the mass. So let's go ahead and justify that inverse relationship. So suppose we push on a standard body defined to have a mass of exactly one kilogram with a force of magnitude one newton, and thus the body will accelerate with a uh, magnitude of one meter per second squared because we just defined our SI units knowing that one newton is one kilogram meters per second squared. So next, we push on another body x with the same force and find that it accelerates at 0 0.25 meters per second squared. So let's make the assumption that with the same force, we get this relationship, mx over m0 equals a0 over ax. And therefore, we find that mx is equal to m0 times a0 over ax. And plugging in all these values, we get that that equals 4 kilograms. And defining the mass of body x in this way is useful only if the procedure is consistent. So if we apply a, let's say, 8 newton force first to the standard body, so instead of 1 newton, this becomes 8 newtons, that will give us an acceleration of 8 meters per second squared. Okay, and then to body x, we get an acceleration of 2 meters per second squared if we apply a force of 8 newtons. And then we would calculate the mass again using this relationship over here. And then we would, in fact, again get 1 kilogram times um, 8 millimeters meters per second squared over 2 meters per second squared, and that gives us again 4 kilograms, which means that this procedure is in fact consistent and usable. And this also suggests that mass is an intrinsic characteristic of a body, which means that it automatically comes with the existence of a specific object. And also it is a scalar quantity, so it does not have any direction as it would be sort of weird to give mass a direction. It wouldn't really make sense as it is just a characteristic of a certain object. So it only has a magnitude. So there isn't really a familiar definition of mass. We say it in English a lot like we have a pretty intuitive understanding of it, something we can physically sense. But mass is not the same thing as um, size, weight, or density. Uh, those are different values and characteristics that we'll talk about later. But mass is only the characteristic that relates a force on the body to the resulting acceleration. Now, I know that's a pretty abstract and mathematical definition, but that's sort of the best definition we have. So now that we know a little bit more about mass, we can move on to Newton's second law, which involves the relationship between mass, net force, and acceleration. So all the definitions and observations we have discussed so far can be summarized with Newton's second law, which says that the net force on a body is equal to the product of the body's mass and its acceleration. And in equation form, we get F net, the vector, equals the mass times the acceleration vector. And the net force must be the vector sum of all the forces. So again, going back to the idea, if we have a ball and we have multiple forces acting on it like so, then it has to be the vector sum of all of these forces. And um, for systems, a system is basically just um, something that consists of one or more bodies. For example, we could have like a railroad engine and a car form a system. So in that case, any force on the bodies inside of the system from the bodies outside of the system is called an external force. So if we have like, let's say a railroad track, and then we have a car and a railroad engine, 
excuse my bad drawing of a car, and then we have some sort of railroad engine over here. This entire thing forms what we call a system. And then when looking at forces, we would only look at the forces that act outside of this square. We wouldn't look at anything that goes in in between the car and the engine because that is known as an internal force. And any internal forces would be disregarded. So when we talk about systems, we have to consider only external forces. And now this equation that we defined over here can actually br be broken up into three different component equations as with other vector equations. We have an x component, a y component, and then a z component. And then like um, our other vector components, one component along let's say the x-axis is completely unrelated to force components along another axis. All right, now we're moving on to Newton's third law which is basically sometimes known as the law of action and reaction, although we are going to make some refinements to that definition because that sort of definition gives us the idea that those two forces happen one before the other, but that is not true. When two bodies interact with each other, they push or pull on each other. So for example, we have this book over here. It is applying a force to this crate and then this crate is applying a force back onto this book in order to keep it from um, falling against the crate. So when two bodies interact, the forces on the bodies from each other are always equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. So for the book and the crate, we can describe the relationship with each other as the scalar relation. So this one says that they are, um, they are scalar magnitudes. Their scalar magnitudes are the same. And this relation says that um, they are e equal, but they are opposite in direction. Um, here is the negative sign that tells us that they are opposite in direction. And we can call the forces between two interacting bodies a third law force pair. When any two bodies interact in any situation, this third law force pair is present. So for example, we have the book and crate um, interaction here, they're stationary, but the third law would still hold in any scenario, even if they were moving and even if they were accelerating. So that is it for Newton's laws. I hope you guys have learned something new, and we're going to dive more into the different types of forces and how we can apply Newton's laws to different problems in upcoming videos, so stay tuned for that. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope to see you guys in the next one.